Today I'm so excited because I will share with you the 10 time management tips I use in my everyday life that help me go from being a disorganized hot mess to have a peaceful, organized and balanced life as a wife, an orthodox Sephardic Jewish mom, a full-time doctor and a YouTuber. I will also include many of my favorite things I do throughout my day to stay motivated and on track and also how I troubleshoot when nothing is going my way in my week or my day. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Malka, and on my channel, I share all facets of my Orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So don't forget to leave a big thumbs up to the video and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tickle and let's jump into it. To be able to do everything in my week, my first time management tip I use all the time is instead of planning only a day by day, I plan a week at a time using my super and intuitive three steps method. I do my first step on Sunday afternoon where I liberate my brain of all the things I need to do for the upcoming week so I'm not exhausted having to remind myself everything I need to do. I place my items in one of the four categories, home, meals, work, and extra fun. I will also use my weekly planner to have an overview of my week. And finally, my daily planner, which is going to be so much fun to fill out later on. And of course, I will have all the links to the three free templates in the description box below. I then take out all my markers because everything looks better in color. I will only use a black pen to write in my different calendars, but I will put and highlight different sections in different colors to color code everything. Then I will write everything that needs to be done in my week on my master to-do list. Some people call it brain dumping, but I prefer to call it brain liberating. I write everything in their four respective categories and I always start with home. So in the home category, I will add all my tasks for the week. Dusting, vacuuming, cleaning, the living room, the dining room, kitchen, bedrooms, and bathrooms, as well as any bill pertaining to the house. And of course, before I add any task, I always ask myself, do I really need to do this task this week? If it is not necessary, it does not even go on the list. Then afterwards, I will go in my meal section. I add everything pertaining to the meals, my meal prep for the week, and every day I will write what meal I will do on that day. I will also write in that section if I need to go grocery shopping this week. And of course, I'm gonna use my magic cookbook and my grocery list from my Walmart haul. I will also write down everything I need to do for Shabbat, including the challah, the fish, the meat, the dafina, the salads and desserts. For my work section, I will look in my phone and my agenda and write on my weekly to-do list all my appointments, my continuous medical education or CME, my meetings, my weekly goals and my important events. I also add everything pertaining to YouTube there too. The next section is my extra fun section where I will write my fun things in the week. I will write if I need to do bikocholim or if we need to prepare meals for a family in need, my prayer, all my self-care like doing my own manicure, doing exercise, family time, date nights, social events, emails, returning Amazon package, call a friend to say happy birthday or just to say hi and practice my new language which is part of my yearly goal and if you want for me to do a separate video on how I set my yearly goals let me know in the comments below. Once I have everything on my weekly to-do list I will take out my weekly planner and I will pick from my list only one task to do per day as my main goal and this is my tip number two. I choose only one priority task I need to do per day of the week. By focusing on one priority task to be accomplished, it helps me to decrease my stress, which usually comes from feeling overwhelmed to see so many tasks on my to-do list. For this week, my priority task will be on Monday to submit my budget report, Tuesday to do my hala, Wednesday to return my Amazon package. As you can see, these are easy daily priority tasks. I usually try to start or complete them in the morning. So for the rest of the day, I have a sense of accomplishment and the more I feel good 
good because I achieved my goals, the more I want to continue feeling good. So I want to achieve more of my goals to accumulate more successes to feel even better. So I create a positive loop that makes me want to do more to feel better. After ticking off my priority tasks from my to-do list, I separate my weekly planner in zones according to my energy level, and here is where my time management tip number three comes handy. I do most of my demanding tasks when I am the most energetic and focused. For me, I am a morning person, and knowing that helps me to better plan my day. Then I will schedule tasks that are easier to do but still needs energy in my second large block in my time besides my work. And finally, all the tasks that are easier to do and do not require much energy nor focus will be done later in the afternoon and night. And of course, if you are a night person or an afternoon person, you should adapt your schedule according to your needs. Knowing when I am most receptive, focused and filled with energy will help me build my days more effectively and lose less time. Which is my tip number four. I do not use a random to-do list. I use time management method called time blocking to plan my week and my days. So when I plan my week, first I add all my appointments, meeting and deadlines in my schedule as they are non-negotiable. I like to make sure I see them very clearly so I frame them in a different color and yes I could have easily have taken a ruler for everything to be straight and neat for the video but I really wanted to give you a realistic view of my weekly planner. Knowing that my energy throughout the day varies as well as my focus level, I will place my general theme blocks activities in my weekly planner with these in mind. Then I create my main time zone. The first one will be high energy, high focus, and I call it power up. Then my second high energy, high focus is called let's go, where I prepare the kids to go to school or to camp. Then it's my work block. Then I have my home block where, as you guessed it, I will do all my home related tasks. And finally, I will have my creativity zone. I continue the planning of my week by adding blocks of time from two to four hours to do certain tasks. For example, I will block my 7 to 9 p.m. time slot to be our family time. I also add an outing time zone where I will go outside of the house to do the grocery, return the Amazon package, so on and so forth. Then I will add my task to do in my weekly time zones. Monday will be laundry and dusting of the house. Thursday will be Shabbat prep. Wednesday will be bathroom cleaning, which is always so exciting. And Friday, of course, will be all the activities related to Shabbat, but I will also do my power hour. It is an hour in which I do all the little random tasks that are super fast to complete, like watering the plants, taking out the recycling, as well as putting back the liner in our laundry hamper. This power hour brings me to my tip number five for my time management, which is to leave buffer zones in my weekly planning. For example, my Tuesday night is left open to do extra things with the family or maybe things that I fell behind on, or even it can just be a self-care night. I finish adding my last time blocked items like my meal prep on Sunday, as well as me uploading for YouTube on Sunday. Now that I have created a general time blocked schedule, I see where I have time to add anything special like activities, nights out, or anything I could add that are outside of what I have already planned in my week. And then the real fun begins in part three of my three steps time management method. I will separate my daily planning in time zones that I have already did in my weekly planner. And because my time zones are almost identical from week to week, I have created templates specifically for my needs, but I wanted to show you the complete process for you to have a better idea how to build your own weekly and daily planner that will be catered to your needs. It might sound like a lot, but realistically, this three-step technique takes me about 20 minutes to do on Sunday and about five minutes per night to prepare the next day to add all the extra to-dos and also adapt my schedule depending on what is happening with the kiddos, hubby, and work. 
Now the real fun begins. I will cross off my weekly to-do list, all the items when I write them down in my daily planner, and that alone gives me great satisfaction. For example, on Monday in my power-up hour, I will put my prayer, my exercise. I put them first because if I do not do them now, I will have a tendency to push them later, even though I know they are the most beneficial for me. Of course, I do not forget to add my daily Torah study in my power-up time period, as well as simple tasks that I will run in the background like the laundry. And here is where tip number six comes handy to fit everything in my different time zones. I will set a timer to complete my task in a certain amount of time to add a challenge. By setting the timer, it pushes me to want to accomplish that task in that set time. It is true I could simply use the timer on my phone, but to make completing task much more fun. I use the app called Flora to help me stay motivated. It is a free app and what I love about it is that with every task completed in my set time, I grow a tree in my accomplishment forest. What I also love about this app is that if I derailed from my task by answering a text or looking online, I put the life of the tree in jeopardy, which of course I do not want to do, so I stay even more focused. I highly recommend this app. My second block of time is let's go, and beside making sure that the kids are ready to go to school or camp and I am ready to go to work, I will do the last minute tasks like soaking the chickpeas for tonight's meal and put a load in the dryer. After bringing the kids to the bus or camp, then I have my work block and usually I cannot do much during that block beside working. And here is my tip number seven. If I have a period of time that are free, like when I'm waiting for the kids at a carpool or stuck in traffic, I will see if I can answer a text, write an email, call a friend, or do mindful breathing exercise to make my time as intentional as possible. When I come home after my work block, I will put my tip number eight in action. I will combine activities in the same time block that are in the same location in the house to avoid the fatigue of going back and forth in the house or have a totally different pace to my tasks. For example, I will combine in the same block of time my starting the overnight challah, filling the dishwasher, cleaning my appliances, and adding another load of laundry in the machine. And to add even more value to my time, I would also listen at the same time to my language class, a podcast, or a Torah class while I'm doing these house chores. Once my schedule is completed, I will put my weekly to-do list, my weekly planner, and my daily planner on my fridge so everyone can see them as well as I can update them as we go along through the week. I also take a picture of all of them, this way if I forget them at home, I always have a copy with me. On Monday night, I will do my Tuesday schedule, adding tasks I need to do on that day, and I will repeat the same process for every day of my week. So all this is beautiful and well, but what if I have an off day? The kids are not cooperating, I'm not feeling up to do anything, or whatever the situation is, it is on these days that I use my tip number nine. I thank God for the reminder that I might plan, but he decides and he is in control. When I feel unmotivated, I will do something completely different for about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how unmotivated I am. During that time, usually I will go for a walk alone or with the kiddos. I will call a friend that I know will make me laugh, or I can also give myself a treat like a nice fancy coffee. In a nutshell, I disconnect completely, and then after that time, I reboot. I will start a task that is quick and easy, like making my bed while listening to a podcast or my favorite music. Usually, after completing that task, I have a sense of accomplishment, it energized me, and I can continue my daily tasks. But if it's a day where I just feel I can't do anything from my schedule, then I will use my tip number 10. I will ask much more help from my hubby and the children, and I will try to continue my tasks or I will simply stop my daily tasks and take care of myself. I will add the task I needed to do in one of my buffer zone in my schedule, or if it's not urgent, it will be simply done the next week, because this way of planning is so forgiving. 
I really hope these 10 tips for time management will inspire you and will help you to do everything you want to do and more as much as they help me. And if you want for me to share with you the seven habits I use in conjunction with these time management tips that makes everything even more smooth and easy in my everyday life, let me know in the comments below because I would love to share these life-changing habits with you. Thank you for being here. It means the world to me. And know that in my book, you are a true hero as you are always willing to learn more to create a better life for you and your loved ones. If you are still here with me until the end, please write in the comments. I love these tips, so I know I was not alone. And if nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up. Or they lay